When you first open R Studio, you're going to have a blank console window that'll have your R version, and hopefully your R version is the latest version that's out there, version 3.5.3. .3. If you don't have at least version 3.5, you might want to upgrade your R before you start this tutorial. So this is called your console, and you can see up here on the top left it says console, then you have a terminal, and you have jobs. We're going to focus on the console area right now. On the right hand side, I have the environment, global environments. Every time I store something in R, it's going to show up here, and I'll show you more about that later. Down at the bottom right, we have where you can have your files within the project, different plots, packages, and we're going to go through some of these as we go along the tutorial. No need to get bogged down in all those details at this moment. So what I want to show you is go back to the console and click, make sure it's in focus. So you click on the actual console window, it should be in focus. You can type things in like 2 plus 2, and it'll give you the result. You see the bracketed, that's line 1, and the answer is 4. And it's always going to be like that. You can even put in something like a string, and in quotes, it'll give you the word back. Now if I type in something without any quotes, it gives you an error. The object hello is not found. So there's certain rules you have to go by when programming in R. If you want it to print the word hello, it's in quotes. If you want hello as a variable, it would be not in quotes. So if we want to store the word hello as something, hello, my name is Mark, and I hit enter, you will see on the global environment window on the top right, it says hello, and it gives you the value, hello, my name is Mark. And down here in the console, it didn't do anything. But if now if I type in the word hello and I hit enter, it, it displays hello, my name is Mark. To delete variables, one way to do that is to clear all of them at the same time. If you click on this little brush icon here, it'll ask you, are you sure you want to remove all the objects from the environment? I'm going to say yes. So now when I go back to the console and I type in hello, it's going to give me that same error. It can't be found. Because when the, without the quotes, it's looking to see if in my global environments it's been stored. Okay, now, we never really want to work in the console area. This is kind of like a quick do a little test run spot, but if you're going to do some real programming, what you want to do is create an R script. Now, this is all within a project. So this project here, we're going to create a script for this project. Click on File, New File, and you see you have all these different options here. An R script is the bare bones, minimal amount that you need to create a a program that's going to follow a set of directions that's stored as like a text file almost. But we're going to skip that and we're going to go straight to our notebook. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. Our notebook will allow you to create what they call markdown and code in the same document. My document is called Untitled One at the moment. And you'll see there's certain things in this document for example, the first through fourth line ha is um, encapsulated by these three dashes. And then I have a title and an output. This is data that the R Studio is going to use in order to create a special output for us. More on that in a moment. For now, we're going to skip what it says here. We're going to go down to these number uh, row 10 and not worry about the rest at the moment. But what I want you to notice is that there's tick marks. These three tick marks here on the left, on row 10 and 12, those are not the apostrophe symbol. This is a huge thing. It's, it's actually, if you look on the keyboard at the number one, it's to the left of one. Where the tilde is, it is that. Those are called back ticks. And you're gonna find, you're gonna find a lot of errors if you actually put in the apostrophe, which looks like that. But they kind of look the same, so I wanted to point that out. Now all this right here is, is just a template. Um, this is just trying to explain to you, hey, this is a notebook, and you can do all these things in a notebook. Between the back ticks, open and close and back ticks, is the actual R program. The rest is R markdown language, which I'll get into as we go through these tutorials. So in between the, the opening back ticks and the curly braces here, with the letter R in there, and the closing backticks is the only place where R code is actually at at the moment. The R inside of the curly braces resembles the R language. 
There are other languages that RStudio can actually interpret and run from a notebook like this, like, for example, Python. And you would denote that with Python. But for now, we're going to keep it with R, and um, this is where the code is. We're going to create our first plot, and it's already there by hitting play here. We hit play, and you're going to see a plot appears. And that's the beauty of the notebook. As you actually write the code, it appears. Now, what you don't know is that cars is a data set that comes included with your RStudio package. So when you installed RStudio, cars came with it. Cars is nothing but data. And on this graph, you see we have speed on the horizontal axis and distance on the vertical axis. Now, we didn't do that code. It was part of the template. So we don't need to actually do that. Um, what we could do is we can print out what this data looks like. But we also might want to store the data as a variable on our own terms so we can modify cars. So let's call it my data, and we're going to set that equal to. Notice my equal to is a less than than a dash. Now you can use an equal sign, but it's not recommended. The equal sign gets confused with equality, like are two things equal to each other, or should I assign something to that variable? This is a no-brainer. It's a arrow pointing to my data, and I'm saying assign the cars data set that comes with RStudio, assign that to the variable called my data. Now, nothing's going to happen now. If I hit enter, nothing. It's not like the console window, which is down here, and you can click on here and you can actually type in cars, because cars is internal. It knows to find it. You saw all of this data when I hit enter appear, and it's got speed and distance. It's not very user friendly but it's there. I want it to be in my environment right over here. So instead of hitting enter, you can do two things. With a, a Mac, I think you can hit command enter, and you see my data over here. On a PC, it'd be control enter. So my data now shows 50 observations of two variables. So looking at this data down here in the console, I've got two variables. Variable one is speed and variable two is distance. The, one, the, the numbers on the very left are your row numbers. They're not really part of the data set. Okay, so now that we have it stored in memory in our environment, our local environment, we can modify it. But we're not gonna get into that now. I just wanted to get you started with your first R notebook. And you can call it an R script, R notebook, whatever you want, but it's a notebook because it's interactive and it's basically live as we're doing this. So my data, if you click on it, in the global environment area, you can actually get a view in like a tabular, like a spreadsheet. You can see it, speed, distance, and you can see the row numbers. It's just like an Excel file. You can't do much with this view except for look at it. And just to be warned, this view has a limit. If there's tens of thousands of um, rows and hundreds of columns, there is a limit to how many will actually display. So this is not the ideal way. This is just a quick way to get a quick feel for what kind of data we have. Now we have speed and distance. That's all we have. I'm guessing that this is a stop in speed, but I don't know. I didn't look at the um, description of what cars is. In the console window, if you want more information, I believe you can hit do question mark cars. Ah, there it is. Any question mark, then the actual data set or the term that I'm using, the reserved words for R, will show up in this bottom area under the tab called help. Now, if you're not into that tab, you just click on it and it'll go back to the latest help you got. I'm not gonna read all this now, but uh, we can read the description. The data gives the speed of cars in the distance taken to stop. Note that the data were recorded in the 1920s. Okay, so now we have some context here. We're gonna look at this data saying, this is the 1920s, let's figure out uh, if there's any relationship, that's the idea. Is there a relationship between speed and distance? In this set of tutorials I'm putting together, I am not gonna go through the actual statistical analysis trying to find models for what we have. I'm gonna show you how to manipulate data and do more of the ETL process, the extraction, transformation, and loading. In other words, I wanna make data clean so that a data scientist can come in and figure out if there's any relationship between these variables. Now, there's one more thing I wanna say. Again, you can put these windows anywhere you want, but I want to give you an analogy that I read off of um, hashtag rstats under Twitter. And the analogy is that this script up here, this notebook, 
is kind of like your recipe. This recipe tells the computer and our studio what to cook up. Down here in the console is actually where you cook things in the recipe. Now you can cook things that are not in the recipe, like I can cook up two plus two right here. But if I put two plus two here in my actual recipe or the notebook file, if I do two plus two, and then I hit enter, nothing happens. This is nothing more than a text file basically until I put it on the stove. How do you put it on the stove? You can hit this play button here and it'll play everything in that recipe, which gave me the plot again. And it didn't do anything with the two plus two, but I'll go over the reasons why, because we didn't store it or tell it to print to the console. So again, if you hit the play button, you end up cooking your recipe in the console it doesn't really show it here, but um, I can show you that later. Now, the environment is like your ingredients that you have in like a like a arm's reach away. You take the ingredients and you can put them on the stove along with the recipe. Down here where your files are, that's kind of like your cabinet where you store stuff that's a little bit further out of reach, but they're not that far out of reach. You can reach into the cabinet and bring them into your arms reach so that you can cook them on the stove. Maybe it's a terrible analogy. It'll sound better when you get to know R. But this is your first of many tutorials. I'm actually going to skip the statistical analysis and we're going to go straight to the extraction, transformation, and loading of data to prepare data for data scientists. Specifically, we're going to be using something called the tidyverse, which is a very clean, elegant way to um, manipulate your data. I hope this video was useful, and if it was, leave a comment below, let me know how, and also subscribe. That'll help me grow my channel and continue creating videos like this.